Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the derivatives of polynomial functions. This is part one, since we're going to be talking about trigonometrical functions and exponential functions as well. Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the derivatives of polynomial functions. This is part one of this little mini-series for derivatives. We're going to be talking about derivatives of uh, trigonometrical functions as well and exponential functions, and perhaps some more. Derivatives in polynomial functions share the same idea. Here's an oversimplified function. f of x equals x to the power of y, the derivative of which would be that y here times x to the power of y minus 1. So the x is being multiplied with the y and the y up here is being subtracted by 1. Here we have a little example. f of x equals x to the power of 3. To form the derivative, you would have to multiply the 3 with the x and subtract 1 from the 3 up here. And you'll end with 3x to the power of 2. These are the two functions compared to each other. Here you see a cubical function the derivative of which being a quadratical function. Let's take another example. This is a more complicated one. This is here, once again, which you see below. And you form the derivative this way. You take the original function and you form the derivatives of each element. The derivative of 2x to the power of 3 would be 3 times 2x to the power of 3 minus 1, which would be 2 in the end. Then the next element would be 3x to the power of 2, the derivative of which being 2 times 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 which in the end will equal 1. And then, last but not least, there's the 1. Normally and mathematically, this would equal still equal 1, since something to the power of 0 will always equal 1. It's, it's just a mathematical rule. However, this rule does not apply for derivatives. And hence, any element that does not carry an x as a factor just disappears. So you can scratch that plus one. And in the end, you simplify this term and this term and you write them down, down there. Like 3 times 2x would be 6x to the power of 3 minus 1 is 2. 6x to the power of 2. And then there's 2 times 3x, which is once again 6x, uh, to the power of 2 minus 1. If you have to write it down, you can even cancel that 1. You don't need to write it down. It will be just 6x. Let's compare these two functions. Take a look at these graphs that represent the functions. This is the original function, and this would be the derivative. Let's take a look at them on top of each other. Take a minute and try to notice something. You can even pause the video. What you might want to notice when calculating a derivative is the derivative is the blue graph and the original is the red one. The y value of the derivative equals the current slope of the original graph. That means Look at this here. This is a maximum of the cubic function. Here the slope equals 0. And so does the y value of the derivative. Same goes here for the minimum. Here the slope is also 0 because, you know, it's a maximum, it's an extremum and the slope is 0. And so, once again, as the derivative's y value. And in between, you have the turning point. And at the turning point, the slope outside of, you know, 
these extremities here, the slope has reaches its maximum and hence the derivative reaches its peak here. You see this hit its peak and it's in the negative quarter of the coordinate system because the original function falls here. It has the maximum falling slope right here and hence the derivative has a negative peak here. Now that's all great and good, but how does this apply to the real world? Why would you want to do that? Let's take an example here. Imagine you have a car that needs to accelerate. It starts at zero meters from its starting point. And then more and more, it starts moving away from the starting point. And the distance between the starting point and its current position rises more and more. And the green graph is the derivative. The derivative tells us both the slope of the original function and therefore the velocity of the car. The car at the beginning has a velocity of, of zero. And therefore it hasn't moved a single inch yet. However, as soon as the, as the velocity rises, the distance the car has driven rises with an acceleration. So by calculating the derivative of the function of the distance the car has driven, you can calculate the velocity and the graph of the velocity. This section right here would mean that the car would be going backwards. It would be going a backwards distance and then therefore a negative velocity. What is also worth mentioning is that with each derivative, the polynomial function loses one bit of complexity. It loses one of its degrees. Like a polynomial function of a fourth degree, which you see here, has a derivative of third degree. The function of third degree has a derivative of the second degree and that second degree function has a derivative of the first degree. So for example, the second derivative of a function of fourth degree would be one, two, this one right here, the second, the quadratical function of second degree, or the third derivation would be one, two, three, graph of first degree. And in order to form these second and third and whatever derivations, you just form the derivation of the derivation. <laughs> like if you have the derivation of a graph fourth degree, which is a graph of third degree, in order to get this graph second derivation, you take the first one and you form the derivation again. And that's it for the video. If you like the channel and want to see more every Saturday, then feel free to subscribe. You can always change your mind and it's totally free. If you wish to give me feedback or have any suggestions for this channel, feel free to share them in the comments. See you next time.